Oh, this is sad. G'day, this week's weekly roundup is fairly quiet, but there's a few interesting things. What? Stealing my boat? Hey! Oh, they're, they're stealing my boat! This first Kickstarter has two products, the Smart Machine and Smart Module. These are two IoT boards that contain an ARM Cortex M3 and pushing out a number of GPIOs. The Smart Machine can be powered from a coin cell battery or USB, and the module from any 3 volt supply. They all have inbuilt slow pan communication. There's also an SM gateway which is identical to the Smart Machine, but contains an Ethernet port instead. Do you want a 5 micrometer full colour 3D printer? Well there's one on Kickstarter that claims to be able to do just that. The campaign is a little scant on information, but it claims to be able to blend three different colour filaments to make any colour you want. It will be interesting to see how this one goes. Another one with scant information, but is an interesting idea. A glass blowing lathe. We're starting to see a lot more unusual desktop fabrication machines now. This one looks a little rough, and even the creator mentions that it's not perfect. Unusually, this one seems to be doing well. It's an educational pie based kit that will monitor a small garden bed. It will monitor things like air quality, temperature, humidity, sunlight, infrared and UV index. It also has an OLED, buttons and knobs to be used as a simple interface. All the data can be sent back to the creator's website so that you can view it. A simple idea that requires no soldering. This will allow your Pi Zero to be connected directly to a PC USB port without cables. It uses pogo pins to connect to the USB port of the Zero and provides a standard USB plug. Blesmo is yet another building block IoT style product. They have a fully functional iOS app that allows you to code up in Blockly style and program over the air. There are a number of elements with onboard LiPo battery providing the usual light, motion, proximity and gesture sensors as well as motor controllers, displays, buttons, buzzers and adapters allowing you to connect to Lego Mindstorms, Widow and Sphero. Robox was a Kickstarter that happened a while ago. Now they are back with an upgrade which is aimed for production houses, more than the average Joe. There's three products, Robox Root, Robox Moat and Robox Tree. Robox Root is a small box based on the Pi that allows you to control a bunch of Robox printers remotely. The Robox Moat is, well, a control interface. And the Robox Tree allows you to stack up to four printers in one unit. These products are really for people who are getting serious with 3D printers. This next Kickstarter is a follow-up from several other Kickstarters that will keep your house warm in winter. It's a DIY off-grid DMPPT thermal control module that not only relies on solar cells, but thermal storage to keep your house warm during winter. Not many people are interested in DSPs, and Kickstarter isn't really the place for this sort of thing. But here it is back again for the fourth attempt. Wonder if you'll get funding this time. Over at Indiegogo, there is a swag of dubious products. For example, the most reliable desktop 3D printer that claims to have a heated 8 inch cubed bed, wifi and also emotion lights, whatever the heck that is. There's been so many 3D printers on crowdfunding sites. Is this yet another dubious product? Who knows? The Y switch is a good idea, but seems to be yet another wireless power switch, probably based off an ESP8266 and simple relay. Then there's the cool box, which is back for the hundredth time. Come on guys, ditch the idea and move on and a bag tracker that claims will give you the GPS location of your lost bag. Too bad that it relies on GSM that isn't available in all countries, not to mention the poor GPS signals when it's in a building or a plane, and then there's the battery life. Then there's Aquacell. But hang on, Aquacell has been around for years. Why are they on crowdfunding sites? For those who don't know, Aquacell relies on a concept that's been around for a while. Water-activated batteries are a great concept, but really, it's a concept and not a product. Just doing a Google of Aquacell and Michael Nest will show you that this guy has been in and out of court for fraud. Enough said. Over at Crowd Supply, things are a little more sane. For example, the FX Development Board is an audio board with prototyping area. It aims to help you build up audio effects pedals and contains everything you'd need to do that. The creator has a bunch of examples showing you what it can do on the FX Dev board website. From there you can then go and manufacture your PCB and create a permanent pedal. Over at Pimeroni they have been causing waves. They have taken a standard press fit connector header and turned it into a DIY no solder kit. Okay, interesting concept. Normally these press fit connectors are pushed in by machine. 
However, the kit comes with a jig allowing you to line things up and then all you need is a hammer and some muscle. My take on it? Just go and buy a soldering iron and learn how to solder. Finally is something interesting. Version 3 of the Pi Compute module has been released. It's based on the Pi 3 hardware and comes in two flavours. The normal version has 1GB RAM and 4GB onboard EMMC and the light version brings out the SD card interface so you can use either SD or EMMC. There's also a new release of the I.O. board to go along with it. At this stage you can pick them up at Element 14 or R as components. Over at Seed there's an IoT dev kit for embed which contains a motherboard and daughterboard. The motherboard is powered from 7 to 12 volts and has a USB port with onboard CP2302 and Arduino style headers. The daughterboard is based on the NRF52832 Bluetooth SOC. Adafruit have a switch that will be the envy of every mad scientist with inbuilt LED and flip out switch protector. And if you have a spare wad of money and want to do some serious LiDAR scanning, then this one will scan up to 40 meters at 10 Hz rotation frequency, obtaining up to 1,075 samples per second. Access to the device is by USB port. DF Robot have a cheap flexible piezo film sensor that can pick up vibration, touch and flex movement. This one has a fairly wide dynamic range from 0.001 Hz to 1 GHz. And a chip to keep your eye on. This STM SOC contains an STM32 MCU as well as a motor driver. Runs from 8 to 45 volts with inbuilt 3.3 buck converter, 12 volt regulator and all the usual STM32 stuff you get elsewhere. This will simplify motor driver circuits greatly. At Banggood there's a LiPo battery management board that delivers up to 20 amps output current. Or this one which can balance the load across three LiPos. Then there's this 12 volt brushless motor driver which is fairly basic but is also fairly cheap allowing you to control an 18 volt motor up to 3 amps. The board can only dissipate 30 watts so there's something odd with their calculations there. If you're having trouble sleeping have you tried to count coulombs? Or if you're not you can get one of these which will not only do that for you but test your lipos, life pose and lead acid batteries. An SDR for only 22 US dollars? Wow. This one can send and receive on HF, FM and AM between 100 kHz and 1.7 GHz. Hmm, interesting. And Banggood seem to have an extra stock of Bluetooth modules, as well as IC Station, who seem to have also bought too much stock. They seem to have every combination you can think of. And for some reason, a whole bunch of cheap battery indicators. Yet another ESP0266 based relay board. This one capable of switching a mains load up to 10 amps from 7 to 30 volt input. Thanks for watching this week's weekly roundup. What again? Ah, uh, hey you, mate. Yeah, you. Put the boats back. Yeah. Sorry about this. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to go and rescue my boats. Um, thanks for watching. See you next week.